I got the world record on Beat Saber. Or at least one of the categories. Is it the main category you're probably wondering? The answer is immediately no, as I don't care to menu faster than the other people. Sorry, but that's a lazy speedrun gimmick, and I would love to talk all day about the speedrun.com forum posts as to how cringe rhythm game speedruns are as it requires menuing and the basic amount of skill to beat the game. Also, what do you mean glitchless percent? Like, would you glitch the game to load faster? I just have genuinely no idea what this means for a category. Okay, so cringe furry content creator here. How do I make this entertaining? Well, the rules do not specify what difficulty I have to do this on, so I'm gonna be, uh, funny and do this on the maximum difficulty. Enjoy! The first level was no sweat, except for the moderate amount of sweating I was doing in real life. But that's also why I prepared for this speedrun and decided not to drink any water for three days straight to minimize the amount of sweating that I'm doing. The first rule of speedrunning is to always have a plan and to be prepared. <laughs> Serious? So I came with the amount of energy to do 5 levels like the rules said, although for the first volume, there's actually 10 levels. It's a great thing I only planned on doing the speedrun once, because there's no other competition. Yet. The only thing that can make the speedrun slower is unintentionally pausing. And trust me, when I say this happened a few times in practice. The reason for this video was redoing this run many times for it to be viewable. The quick explanation is the camera is tilted too far up, so I have to tilt either my headset or neck down, which usually meant a combination of both. If you look into glasses at a tilted angle, it becomes blurry, and keeping your neck pointed down at a 60 degree angle doesn't feel great. So I wanted to think of these first few runs as conditioning. But really, it meant learning how to hit the notes while being able to see at 30% of what a normal person could see. Also, yes, I know there is a camera mod for Beat Saber to make this footage easier to record or better to watch, but unfortunately, mods aren't allowed in this category, and I am 100% fine sacrificing my string bean neck for a world record that will likely be gone a week after recording this. Other than the neck and eye issues, the major skill issue that could slow this rundown, other than obviously losing, is randomly pausing. The issue here is that the button is right under where I leave my thumb on the controller. Slow menuing can make the difference of a few frames or seconds as well, so you'll often see me hold up my controller to hit the button as soon as there is the audio and touch cue to hit the button. This, however, is an empty speedrun category. So for now, the mistakes will slide by, but maybe someone will see this video and challenge my flawless gameplay. The speedrun starts as soon as the first song begins and ends on the results screen of the final song. However, I think you can go in any order. To be fair, the rules on speedrun.com are pretty ambiguous, but that might be by design. Anyways, the first song was actually the last song in the volume 1 OST, because I decided to play through it backwards for some reason. This ended up being the run I decided to submit, so it worked out at the very least. The run started strong with an SS rank out of the gate, but would eventually dip down to an A and then settle around an S by the end. I was glad this first song did well, as I did zero practice on this song, but the run would get noticeably harder as I failed a few songs due to not practicing them beforehand. At least my menuing was semi-decent, but my hands are either incredibly shaky throughout the footage or the tracking is messed up. Sometimes it's easy to let the hubris of once being a top 2000 Beat Saber player get in the way of realizing that this is difficult when your headset isn't on the right way and your neck is tilted at a bad angle. This is also very evident in the next song as I average around a B score, which is awful if you're experienced with competitive Beat Saber. If mods were allowed, I can assure you it would have been better and certainly less laggy at a few points. Anyways, the only part that matters is of course irrelevant to the gameplay. Yes, this is the peak of any speedrun, but it's the menu. Anyway. Again, it was decent here, but not perfect as I should have just accepted the misclick and moved on to the next song. But my non-diagnosed OCD required me to do these in reverse order. While this next song is playing, I figured I would take the time to talk about how much the Beat Saber songs have changed. It's interesting to me to see how robotic some of the movements feel in the first volume OST compared to the newer releases. The charting definitely feels better and the movements are much more fluid than they were during the first few OST releases. That said, I don't hate all of the patterns, and I feel this song does a good job. Plus it was easy enough for me to get an A rank with impaired vision for the sake of this recording. The next song starts off even better, and I managed to flawless it up until about the halfway mark. And then the temporary high of doing well fades as the score immediately drops down to an S rank, and eventually just to an A rank. Both terrible by rank standards. The menu here wasn't great as again the shaky hands delay the button presses by a few fractions of a second, but the adrenaline from playing the game surprisingly helps keep the momentum of the speedrun going, despite the speedrunning imperfections. Country Rounds is probably my favorite song from the first volume, as this is the song I played with my parents and sister back when I showed this game to them. I was given my first VR headset before COVID as I religiously played Beat Saber during my online classes. But the point here is that a few years ago, this gift of a Rift S headset came with the price of having to share it with my family. So I offered to let them use it from time to time, however that lasted a whole two to three times, and then it was almost exclusively mine. Anyways, to go back to the game from that tangent, I'm a fan of the patterns here, and my parents like this song as well, so it's Otter Parent approved. Commercial pumping starts off somewhat strong with some equally strong lag in the footage. Fast forwarding through this to get to the slightly better content, and wow, the song is basically already over. 
I almost feel bad for the speedrun.com people trying to verify some of this stuff, because I feel like watching this footage would incur the wrath of the migraines, but it's a great thing I can counterspell this offensive spell with dopamine. Anyways, another good menu time and one Microsoft PowerPoint presentation of a frame rate slideshow later, and we're in the endgame. I'll try to leave the spoilers out, but the movie's been out for 5 years at this point, so there's not much I can do to help there. The lyric pumping isn't too bad, except for one of the faster patterns, but it's actually pretty fun for something made in Volume 1. This speedrun, or at least the way I played it, was finished out with $100 bills, because it's a fairly easy song to end on. The rationale being I might as well do the harder stuff first, and leave the easier stuff to make the end as anticlimactic as possible, so viewers fall asleep and leave YouTube on autoplay and watch my other videos. Some final thoughts on the speedrun. I 100% agree with whatever random user decided to yap about on speedrun.com in the forum saying this is a dumb speedrun, because it is. If you consider that I did this on max difficulty for the lols, this makes the speedrun even less entertaining or remotely impressive if you were to do this in the easiest way possible. Was my gameplay perfect? Almost definitely not, but I would like to show some more Beat Saber content at some point so I can show that I actually deserve the rank that I have in the competitive community. So 6,649 notes in roughly 22 minutes, 49 seconds, and 86 milliseconds, give or take some time checks later, that's a world record. Partially because nobody else has done it, but hey, what can I say? But someone has to be the pioneer and sail the SS stupidity ship right into a semi decent video. Like any normal person, I celebrated a successful speedrun by playing Ghost on Expert Plus afterwards. If you'd like to see that, even though I failed after nearly 30 seconds, it's on the Patreon, and you get these headshots at the end of the video. For $3, it's one of the best deals out there for a quick art commission. There's also the Discord if you'd like to join me in my Fortnite addiction. Thanks to everyone who makes these videos possible, and I will see you in the next video. Have a good one, y'all. I wonder what the video would look like if I did this all in one take and we didn't edit out any of the things I said, like just throwing water up on screen. Awesome, bad voice crack, holy.